In this example, I'd like to look at the determination of the critical load that's required to buckle a beam, but the beam in this case is supported by two springs at the quarter points from each end. So we're going to get some type of stiffening behavior from the springs, and that's going to increase the load for buckling above the Euler load. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a trigonometric series solution together with sort of a Ritz type approximation. So to be able to do this, We'll start by writing down the potential energy for the beam, which is, includes two storage terms. There's the bending energy, which is 1 half EI V double prime squared, so the curvature squared, plus the energy from the two springs. So that'll be 1 half K, the deflection at the first quarter point squared, plus 1 half K, the deflection at the second quarter point squared plus the potential of the load which is minus p integral 0 to l 1 half the first derivative of the deflection squared dx and as an approximation what we'll go ahead and do is we'll write out the deflection in terms of a series so let's say i equals 1 to capital N of a set of unknown coefficients times a set of sine terms so sine i pi x over l so the signs are designed to satisfy the boundary conditions at the two ends of the beam that we have here. And so what we can do is we can plug in v into pi here, and what's going to happen is we're going to end up with an expression for pi that depends on c1, c2, all the way out to cn. So my potential energy becomes a function of n parameters in this case. So integral 0 to l, 1 half. EI, and now we have to plug in two derivatives of my approximation here. So if I take two derivatives, I'm going to end up with an I pi over L squared CI times the sine of I pi X over L quantity squared dx and there's a minus sign that appears but due to the square it drops out so I'm not going to include that and then we have a term from the first spring 1 half k again a sum over i of ci sine i pi over 4 in this case quantity squared plus 1 half k so the second spring sum again over i ci sine of i 3 pi over 4 quantity squared and then we have the potential of the load so minus p integral 0 to l 1 half and then we have one derivative here so we'll have the summation again over i i pi over l times ci times the cosine of i pi x over L. So that's my total potential energy in my system. To get the equilibrium equations, I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to each C, so C1, C2, C3, all the way to Cn, and that will generate for me a set of equilibrium equations. So we'll do this all in one shot. So we'll say d pi D, let's say cj so j just represents one of the coefficients and so from the first term we'll get integral 0 to L j pi over L quantity squared sine of j pi x over L times EI times the summation over I of i pi over l squared sine of i pi x over l dx times ci so I'll bring ci out from underneath the integral sign because it doesn't depend on x plus from the first spring k sine j pi over 4 times the sum over i again of sine i pi over 4 
ci. Then from the second spring plus k, sine j 3 pi over 4 times the sum over i of sine i 3 pi over 4 ci. And then lastly, the potential of the load term is integral 0 to l j pi over l times the cosine of j pi x over l times the sum over i of i pi over l cosine of i pi x over l dx times ci. And this whole thing is supposed to be equal to zero. So notice that I have integrals here where I have orthogonal functions multiplying each other. So the two integral terms are actually going to produce diagonal matrices. And these two terms here are going to produce matrices that are full. So we can go ahead and kind of clean things up by dividing through by EI over L cubed, and that will kind of make things a little bit easier. If we do that, what's going to happen is the first term is going to produce a diagonal matrix whose entries are I to the fourth power. The two terms in the middle are going to give me terms that look as follows. 2K over pi to the fourth divided by EI over L cubed times a matrix that's formed out of terms that are the products of the sine function. So we'll have sine I pi over 4 times the sine of J pi over 4 plus the sine of I 3 pi over 4 times the sine of j 3 pi over 4. So that's going to be a full matrix. And then the last term is going to give me a diagonal term, which looks as follows. It's going to be p over pi squared ei over l squared, and a diagonal matrix whose entries are simply i squared. All of this is going to multiply into the vector C1, C2, all the way down to Cn is equal to a vector of all zeros. So again, we're looking at an eigenvalue problem here that will then determine this eigenvalue here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do something specific. Let's assume the ratio of k to ei over l cubed has a particular value, and then we'll just sort of I'll sketch out what the solution looks like. So we'll say k over ei over l cubed is equal to 2,000. And we can go ahead and then try and solve that eigenvalue problem for different values of terms. So let's just go ahead and make a table here. So we'll have n, and we'll put p critical here. So p critical is the minimum eigenvalue of that problem. So if I do one term, I'll find that P critical is equal to 42. And so this is the scaled P critical. So this is P over EI over L squared times pi squared. So it's essentially the scaled value off the Euler load. If I put two terms in, I'll find out that I'm looking at 8.05. If I put four terms in, I'll find out that I'm at 8.05 again. If I put five terms in, actually let's see, one, two, this should have been a three here. If I put four terms, 8.05, so it looks like it's converged, but if I put the fifth term in, I actually get something slightly different, 8.04. And you can keep going here. Once you put in seven terms, this comes down to 8.3, and then it doesn't change thereafter. So what we find out is that the critical load for the system here becomes, so the actual critical load, this is the scaled value up here, is going to be 
8.3 times the Euler load, so pi squared EI over L squared. If you go ahead and look at the corresponding eigenvector and we look, say, at the, at the first few terms, what we find is that there's a dominant component that is the first sine wave. There's really no second component. The third component so the, is on the order of the first component. The fourth component doesn't exist. And then if we go to the fifth component, it's really pretty small. It's only 2% of the whole thing. So the approximate buckling shape of the system looks like 1 times the sine of pi x over L minus 0 0.81 times the sine of 3 pi x over L plus 0 0.02 times the sine of 5 pi x over L. So this is sort of the generic solution. So if I were to try and draw that, so let me put my, my structure in here. We'll put the springs in. So what this looks like, if I sketch it, is it looks like something that goes up like that. So there's a little bit of deflection near where the springs actually are. It comes back down, and it looks like that. So that's the basic mode into which it buckles. So there's a small amount of deflection right here and right here where I have my spring supports, but not very much.